the okay so this is the question it says a uh, particle of mass um, some amount of mass moves along the x-axis okay with the uh, oh so they are giving us a plot of potential energy whose dependence on x is shown below okay Thursday so the question asks what is the force on the particle at the specified positions but they've given us a plot of potential energy and that and that's because they expect us to use this relationship that we've used um, the really so we've used this to derive some potential energy formulas which is that potential energy of uh, well, it's potential energy and if you're talking about potential energy it must be of a conservative force um, and that potential energy associated with a conservative force is given by minus the opposite sign of the work done by conservative uh, force or if you write out the definition of for or, or definition of work in the most general case it would be minus um, integral of the force as a function of position which it could be for conservative forces from uh, so we are talking about change in potential energy a to b so from a to b so this definition we have used to derive some formulas for potential energy and this calculus relationship can be reversed you know the I guess the fundamental theorem of calculus i think that's the word for it you can reverse this relationship to say this if you have a conservative force then you can actually get this conservative force from having an expression for potential energy or a functional form for the potential energy you can say that the conservative force uh, let's say in the x direction you are only interested in one component then it's the negative of this minus sign and partial derivative with respect to the component you are interested in of the potential energy function and a partial derivative for those of you who haven't taken math 3c yet it's actually simple it just means when you're taking derivative you treat other variables like y and z as um, constant so partial derivative is actually simpler than total derivative so um, just yeah so this equation is what they expect us to use so they've given us the functional form for the potential energy so they expect us to know how to take the derivative with respect to x and oh and reverse the sign and that's going to be the force so let's do that here um so at x equals two that's somewhere here oh that's flat so the force has got to be zero that's why the potential energy isn't changing um, because it's not uh, doing any work uh and uh at x uh, equals five. Oh, okay it's good <laughs> this kink this is at six so five is somewhere here the upward slope uh, so i have to estimate the slope i think i'm looking at uh that looks like 12 so 4 to 12 so rise rise is at eight and the, i need to divide by the run which is two so four or um I guess it's upward slope, which means the force must have been in the negative x direction. So minus uh, 4. I hope it's close enough. <laughs> we'll see. Um, and at 8, okay, I got to do the whole run. Um, so it's going, in the, going from 12 to, uh, I think, a minus 12. So the entire rise is minus 24 rise. Uh, divide by uh, 6 to, I think that's 10. Uh, so 10, so minus 2.4 is a slope. The force would be opposite of that, so plus 2.4. You don't actually need a plus sign. Um, and at x equals 12, it's 0 again because it's flat. Okay, let's make sure I got this right because it involves a little bit of eyeballing. Sometimes question is a bit strict. Uh, That was 10, 6 to 10. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's why. <laughs> 6 to 10 is not 10. It's the, it's the run of 4. <laughs> so this is going to be plus 6. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. 
So, all right, so those are the forces, and I think it makes sense. So the question says, if the total mechanical energy of the particle is minus 6 joule, so the, I can use the plot on the left-hand side to just the plot the energy level. So minus 6, this is how much energy that it has. Um, then it says, what are the minimum and maximum positions of the particle? Oh, yeah, so the particle can't exist in places like here because the difference between the total energy and potential energy that's negative and, you know, the total energy being potential energy plus kinetic energy, the total energy minus potential energy is kinetic energy, and there's no such thing as negative kinetic energy. I mean, negative potential energy is fine, but negative kinetic energy doesn't exist. And so this constraint means the particle can really only exist here, where it can have some positive or zero kinetic energy. So, um, so yeah, this point, it kind of looks like a nine. I'll, I'll be more uh, precise if it says my answer is wrong. This kind of looks like 15. So nine to 15, maybe. So, so that's what it's getting at. And these have actually a special name for it um, in context where it's important. It's called the classical turning point. Uh, I, I guess it's more important for you know, uh, quantum mechanics. <laughs> classical turning points are not that interesting in actual classical mechanics. Uh, so anyways, uh, okay. And I think uh, there's a fairly generous uh, tolerance on these parts because you are eyeballing the plot so it, the high precision can't be enforced <laughs> so if energy is equal to 16 joule okay so if uh, it's coming in with a 16 joule then that's enough energy to basically be anywhere because that's all right well 12 um yeah, so 14 six, yeah this is about 16 joules so it can be anywhere so when it's asking what are the speeds of the particle at the positions listed here um then it's just getting at, oh, so I can just take the difference that'll give us the kinetic energy, which is equal to one half mv squared, or turning it around, v is equal to square root of two times the kinetic energy divided by m. So, um, so that's all we need. So I just need to read off the how much uh, kinetic energy we have at each of those positions. So let me just have the expression set. I think that's the quickest way to do this. Um, so I need a symbol defined for kinetic energy. And my expression for velocity speed will be square root of two times kinetic energy divided by mass. Um, and they've given us the mass, good. So we're gonna be substituting in mass of 0 0.5 kilogram. It's the kinetic energy that will change each, with each time. And x equals two. So 16 minus four. Let me just do it here. So it's getting tired. Um, so let me plug those in. Uh, we're gonna put this into, uh, okay. So 6.93 meters per second. Everything was already in basic SI unit, I think. Yeah, basic SI units. Okay, um, and uh, at x equals 5, the position, it looks like an 8, I think. So 5.66. Okay, at x equals 8, my total energy is 0, or sorry. Potential energy is zero, so all of the total energy, 16 joules, becomes my kinetic, so eight. Um, and at x equals 12, uh, minus 12, so, and I plug in the number this way, minus 12. And you can see how all this can be very, oops, uh, okay. all this can be very programmatically be done. Uh, the part that, so, you know, those programmatic part, they can be automated, like the, the me doing this, that's because I was too lazy to just program in a function, but um, the part that can't be automated is the part of doing, you know, reading the question and figuring out what it's asking about until AI develops a lot better than what it is now. That part still requires a human being, and that's the part that I encourage you to uh, practice, build up, like doing the algebra, plugging in numbers, 
that kind of tedious menial tasks can be done by machines. Um, the part that can't be done by machines yet <laughs> is the uh, part that requires an engineer.